In this lesson, we're going to continue discussing graphics. If you'd like to follow along, go under your file menu to open, and in the Working Files folder, go into Chapter Number 12 and find a folder that's called The Advantages of AI and PSD, and then select the InDesign file inside that folder and click Open. Before we begin, I'm going to go to my Zoom tool and just zoom in a little bit closer on the page and then go back to my selection tool. When you're placing graphics, you should always try to use the native formats from Photoshop and Illustrator whenever possible. Why? AI, the native format of Illustrator, and PSD, the native format of Photoshop, are the most compatible formats with InDesign. Why don't we start by placing a layered Photoshop file that was saved as a PSD. I'm going to go to File, Place. And in my Working Files folder in Chapter 12, the advantages of AI and PSD, I'm going to go into the Links folder and select the Photoshop file. Now, I want to go into the options for placing this Photoshop file. In order to do that, I'm going to hold down my Shift key and click Open. And you can see there's a lot of options here. There's options for image, but everything's grayed out, for color, and also for the layers that are available in this Photoshop file. You can see in the file itself, there's only one layer on. Let me turn that off. And if you have preview checked, you will see what's going on. If you don't, check preview. I'm going to go up just a little bit, and it says biker only. So that's a separate layer, and I can actually turn that layer on or off in InDesign as I'm placing the image. It's not affecting anything in the Photoshop file itself. It's just reading the layers and allowing me to show in InDesign only the layers I want. Now it says biker only, but there's also a hill. Let me click the little visibility eye next to that to turn it on. You can see now there's a little hill underneath the biker. There's also a sky. Let me turn that on. So this entire image is made up of various layers. Let me turn off the sky and turn on something called Sky Transparent. It still has a sky, but that particular layer is not 100% opaque. You can see through it. Besides being able to turn on individual layers one at a time, I also saved in my Photoshop file something called Layer Comps. You can save Layer Comps to turn on a collection of layers. So certain layers will be turned on and certain layers will be turned off in different layer comps. I'm going to go under the little pop-up and go to, how about Biker with Sky? Well, that's just the biker and the sky. The hill is gone. But there's also Biker, Sky, and Hill. And it's actually turning on the layers up over here where it says Show Layers. And another one, I have Biker, Transparent Sky, and Hill. So you can see I saved a lot of layer comps with this image. And I have total control over those layers from within InDesign. And turning them on and off doesn't affect the Photoshop file at all. Now, I'm just going to click OK. And it brings in the image into a loaded brush. And now all I have to do is click on the frame. And you can see that the blue sky is transparent and the red is actually coming through the sky. Yet the biker and the hill are not transparent at all. So you can't see through them. Let me scroll down a bit and get to this yellow background. And I'm going to select the graphic frame that's over the top of the yellow background. So I'm going to go to File. Place, 
in order to place an Illustrator logo. In that same links folder, I'm going to go to an Illustrator file called photospin.ai and I'm going to hold down my shift key to get to the options for placing this image and then click open. And you can see it's giving me quite a bit of control. I can actually place several artboards if I want or arrange. I could go through the artboards if I had more than one. I could click the arrows to preview them to see which one I want to place. So I could put that number in the range field. Also, I can pick how the artwork is going to be cropped. Now, let me see what the choices are there. It says bounding box, visible layers only. Well, I happen to know that I want to use the bounding box for all of my layers because some of the layers right now are not on. So if I were to choose visible layers only and then turn on the invisible layers afterwards, it's not going to fit my frame the right way. So I'm going to choose that, but I could also choose the artwork. I could choose crop if I had any crops in there. I could choose trim. So there's a lot of choices on how to bring the artwork into my layout. But I'm going to go back to bounding box, all layers. So if I start turning on and off layers, I'm not going to be missing parts of my artwork. And let me go into layers. And you can see there's several layers here. And if I click background, it's going to put a background in there. If I turn off logo and I turn on transparent logo, the logo has some transparency going on in that layer. I'm going to turn off background and now just click OK in order to place the image. And there it is. And you can see that the red lettering in the photospin.com artwork and by the way all of our photographs are from photospin.com so make sure to visit the site and you can see the letters are transparent they were transparent in illustrator and when i bring them into indesign they're still transparent and with either of these the photoshop file or the illustrator file after I place it, I could actually change those options as to which layers are being seen. If I select the Photoshop file with my selection tool and go under the object menu, there's something called object layer options. And all of the options that I had when I was placing the image are still available. So I can turn on or off layers. I could also choose a layer comp. How about Biker, Transparent Sky, and Hill? And you'll see that they come back on. If nothing is happening, make sure to hit Preview. Let me click OK. And I'm going to go down to my Illustrator Art and go under the Object menu to Object Layer Options. And you can see I have the same kinds of choices. I could turn on the regular logo and you can see that's not transparent and it's actually right now covering the transparent logo. Let me turn on my background, see how that looks. Let me turn off my logo that is in transparent, the top one, and now you can see that the photo spin lettering is transparent and you can see the purple background right through it. So you do have a tremendous amount of control when you're using the native formats of Photoshop and Illustrator. So if you're still using TIFF out of Photoshop or EPS out of Illustrator, it's time to go native. Use AI out of Illustrator and PSD out of Photoshop. And you'll have a lot more control over what's happening with your graphics in InDesign. We're going to continue to discuss graphics in the next lesson.